This Wednesday, December 16th, let's go over your memory scripture, Isaiah 9, 6. It says, for unto us a son, a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, Isaiah 9, 6. One day we began to talk about the Hebrews and their journey through the wilderness. They are being led by the cloud by day and the fire by night. And so God had provided water for the people. But after traveling for some time, the people were hungry. And so they were like, we need meat. We need food to eat. We had all the food in Egypt. So the Lord provided for them and he gave them manna, which was bread from heaven. They weren't quite sure what kind of bread it was. It was just bread from heaven. And the Lord actually gave them manna every day. So every day when they woke up, manna was on the ground and they had to go and gather um, all the manna that they wanted. And so the Lord also provided quail for them, which were, which is which was meat. And so the quail came, God sent a wind and the quail came and they flew low enough to where the people were able to just grab the quail and they were able to have meat as well. So the Lord had provided bread from heaven for them and quail meat. Hebrews continued their journey through the wilderness. And this time when they stopped, they stopped in a place called Rephidim. Now the Hebrews were kind of fearful in this place because it was a place that had no water. It was hot, it was dry. It was like one of the worst parts of the wilderness. And so the, they started to blame Moses. They began to complain. They were like, Moses, why did you bring us here? Moses, there's no water here. We're gonna die of thirst. We are gonna die. Our children are gonna die. Our animals are gonna die. So they began to complain when God was still with them. The cloud was there. God led them there. The Lord was providing for them, but they just chose to complain instead of just asking the Lord for what they wanted. But Moses knew how to pray. And so Moses went and he prayed and he asked God, he says, Lord, I am tired of these people. Pretty much is that that's what he said. And he's like, Lord, what should we do? So God told Moses to take the elders of Israel and all the people and go and stand before a rock. And God told Moses to strike the rock. And when Moses would strike the rock, water would come gushing out of the rock. And that's exactly what Moses did. He went, he stood before the rock with all the people. Everyone saw. And Moses struck the rock and water came pouring out. It was so much water. They were able to drink until they were full. Their animals were able to drink. And so the Lord had provided for them yet again. And this time, this it was water from a rock. So God is doing miracles where it's not something that just can happen any day any way any any kind of way right these are miraculous things water coming from a rock we know rocks are dry there's no water inside of a rock and so god is doing this so that the people can see that their god is with them and that they can trust god to take care of them okay so let's go ahead and begin with our lesson on this week because they are still traveling through the wilderness they haven't made it to the promised land just yet so the hebrews are traveling through the wilderness and as they traveled um they had most of like the men in the front like leading the way and towards the back of like the caravan that's what you call it like all the people traveling at once it was called like a caravan and so towards the back of the caravan you had kind of like the older people and like the younger children who traveled um through the back of the caravan so as they're traveling, there were some, they were traveling through a place and there were some people called the Amalekites who lived in the mountains of that, that part of the wilderness. So those people, the Amalekites, they lived in the mountains and they saw the Hebrews and they saw all of them and how they were um, traveling. Now the Israelites, the Hebrews, they didn't know that the Amalekites lived in this part of the wilderness. So the Amalekites, when they saw the Israelites and they saw especially who they saw were to the back, like the weaker people, you know, the older people, the children, they decided to go and attack the Hebrews. So it was so many of them that whenever the Amalekites attacked the back of the group, the front of the group didn't realize it until like after it had already happened. Remember, it's like a million Hebrews at this time. So they are a lot of people. And so the Amalekites came and they knocked them down. They stole their bracelets and earrings 
and all of that and they um attacked the back of the caravan because they made sure not to attack where any strong people were so finally word of what happened reached moses because moses was to the front of the caravan and moses acted quickly he's like oh no we have to do something about this so he chose several young men to be soldiers and then he chose a very brave young man named joshua to be the captain and to lead the soldiers against the amalekites moses told this young man joshua he said prepare to fight the amalekites tomorrow i will stand on top of the hill with god's rod in my hand this is the first time that joshua who Moses appointed as captain is mentioned in scripture. And so Joshua, um, he's, he's going to have a big job after Moses will um, die. Joshua is going to be the one who will take the place of leading the people. That's why if you say um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, that's this Joshua. That Bible book is um, about him. And we will get to those lessons as well. So whenever Moses decided to uh, set up an army to fight the Amalekites because he's like, we're going to go get our stuff back. We're going to show them that they can't just attack us like this. They had to defend themselves. He chose Joshua to be the captain of the army. And so, and Moses said, y'all are going to go fight. He says, I will sit on top of a hill and I will watch the fight and I will have God's rod in my hand. So the next morning, Moses, Aaron, and a man named Ur climbed up to the hilltop to watch from where the battle with the Amalekites would be. As the battle started, Moses stretched out his arms, holding the rod of God towards heaven. And he asked God to help his people fight off the Amalekites. Now keep in mind, the Hebrews are not soldiers, right? They have never had an army before, none of that. They are truly relying on God to give them the victory of this battle because they haven't fought the last time somebody an army came after them the lord drowned remember he drowned the egyptian army so this is moses shows these young men and they had to go to war and so moses as the battle was going on he sat on the hill and he stretched his rod towards heaven and asking the lord to help them and so as moses had his hands stretched out towards heaven Israel soon began to defeat the Amalekites and the Amalekites began to run away because the Israelites were beating them. And so Moses, his arms got tired. And so when he put his arms down, guess what? The Amalekites came back and they started to come back in to defeat Israel. So as um, the Amalekites were winning the battle against Joshua and his men, Moses lifted up his arms again towards heaven. And then the Israelites began to win. And then Moses' arms grew tired, and when he put his arms down, the Amalekites began to win. So every time Moses had his arms lifted towards heaven, the Israelites were winning because he was relying. That meant he was like, God, you give us the victory. But any time he put his arms down, the Amalekites began to win. So Moses, he had gotten too tired. He was like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. So Aaron and Ur, who were there with Moses, they realized, they said, wait, every time your arms are lifted, Moses, we began to win the battle. But when you put them down, that's when we lose. So they said, oh, no, we're going to help you out. So they found a large stone and they put Moses sitting down on the stone and they each held up one of Moses' arms so that his arms could stay lifted until the battle was over. And so after a while, the Israelites won and the Amalekites lost. They drove them. They ran them away. And God had given Israel the victory over the Amalekites. And then Moses was able to take his arms down and rest. And so after this battle, Moses built an altar to the Lord. And he said, you are Jehovah Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner or flag. And so what that meant is God gave them the victory. They only won the war because of God. He, he is their victory. And so um, the Hebrews, this was their first battle that they fought and God had given them the victory. And this is the first of many. And so God is making them an army. They, are, they weren't even like, you know, a nation at first. God is making them a nation. Now God is giving them the victory over people. Who, you know, I'm sure the Amalekites had fought a war before, but God gave them the victory over the Amalekites. So the Lord is proving he is with his people and he has their back. So that completes our Bible lesson on today, the Israelites defeating the Amalekites.